and I compare you know A A B to B A A, this takes you know x minus four nanoseconds or something. Uh, so it takes slightly less time because I can know immediately. Fails quicker. Yeah, people can use that as a statistical attack to find your P. They can just guess the first letter until it takes a little longer. Oh, that was the first letter, and then they go to the second one. Oh, third one. And they keep going until they guess the key. And once you know this attack, this is called a side channel attack. Uh, once you know how to do this attack, you can program it and guess somebody's key in a matter of seconds. Uh, so, so you have to use a special, subtle comparison algorithm that always takes the same amount of time so you don't accidentally reveal information about the key that you weren't supposed to. And so I, I don't pretend to know all the, the possibilities here. I mean, it, it feels like a fruitless endeavor to try, but you're just like, what if I forget to do that? Um, anyway. So it's theoretically, this secret box library should do a lot of that for you. Okay. But it's still, there's some subtleties. We do need to make the nonce random. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, but, okay. So let's see if we can get the other side of this. So what I did is I prepended to the encrypted message the nonce. Okay, so it'll be nonce colon message. And then on the other side, I'll, I'll pull it out, right? So, um, uh, it's hex dot new, I forget. Decode string. Um, so I need the two parts, so parts. two of them. Expected nonce. Um, okay, and then we can get the nonce by doing uh, hex dot decode string. Give it part zero. And so those will be the bytes and possibly an error. If the error is not nil, that means it wasn't hexadecimal encoded. So some, somebody passed us in a bad string. So, uh, we return that, and then we have to copy this into our nonce. So, or link, right, it's not equal to anything. Okay, so, so that'll fill our nonce. So that, that gets it from, it's a lot easier to write it than it is to read it. Uh, so, um, so we have our, our nonce, we've got to get the data the same way. So uh, we'll except this time we get the second part of the bit there. Now we have the bytes, and now we have to call seal. Okay, so I have I have this bit here, and I have uh, a bunch of bytes that is the encrypted message, and I want to unseal it. I want to open it, right? I want to see what was what it was. Um, so I'll say decrypted uh, secret box dot open, and the message here is the bytes. This is the en encrypted message. The nonce is the nonce. Uh, this, this means as a byte slice, okay? Because it's an array. So that's how you get it as a byte slice. Uh, and then the last bit is the password, I think. He has the key. Sorry, Paul. I just get the key. So. You're confusing the theory. Stuff. Siri's like, I didn't get that. Okay. So now we have our decrypted uh, blob here, and this can return an error. Right? Because open can return true or false, whether it succeeded or not. Uh, so.
not okay. Invalid message. Otherwise, we return decrypted. Okay. So. Oh, sorry. This should be ampersand nonce. Okay, so this is complicated, right? A lot of steps involved. But this should encrypt and this should decrypt. Now all we have to do is generate a random password. And so the way we're gonna do that is uh, make a function generate password, which is going to return this 32 byte thing. And the way we do that is we say this. this type here, okay? Um, and so now instead of generating this way, we'll generate it that way. Okay, so now we have our secret key. Now to, to generate our encrypted message. Is the UUID Is. is it 20? I don't remember. Yeah, the 32, 32 is less, is more. So um, this is only 16 bytes. So we have twice as many bytes in our password as in the UUID. Um, so, so this, this key here is bigger than this key, okay? Uh, but, but the reason we did that is because that's what the library expects. Uh, so we get our encrypted message by calling uh, encrypt, give it the message, the password here is the secret key, and that should give us the message. Okay. Now here, we have to format this as a hex because now it's not a UUID, so we'll just do percent %x and give it the secret key. Okay. So now, instead of message, we save encrypted message. I think it'll store it in there. So if we go back to here, so test the six, submit. And now, on our URL, we have this big, huge secret thing in there. And we get back a bunch of gobbledygook because we haven't decoded it, right? Um, so we have our key. The key is where we find it in, in memcache. And then we have our secret, and the secret is how we decrypt the message out of memcache. So if I were an admin looking at my memcache server, all I would see are a bunch of these things. I have no idea what this message was, though I would have some idea of its length, okay? So we are leaking a little bit of information. I know this is not a very long message because of how short it is. Right, if it were longer, the string would be longer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know the contents of the message. I can't see what it is. In fact, the funny thing in this case is the nonce is longer than the message itself. Uh, but see this colon? That's separating the two. Um, and you can see why this is a random number that's unlikely to ever occur again. It's really big. <laughs> uh, it is totally random. And so the chance of that ever happening again are extremely small, infinitesimally small. Uh, and so. That's why it's a number used once. Um, okay, so we have our message, we need to decrypt it. To decrypt it, we come down here in our handle message and we call decrypt. The encrypted is the item.value and the password we have to get from the URL. So um, Call decode string and then give it a rec.form value secret. Okay? So that's what was passed on the URL. And it's a hex string. And we want to decrypt it, right? This is a hex string right here. And so we're just decrypting that into the byte itself. Um, And 
then we uh, use the secret key to decrypt. So that's what we pass in here. Um, we're going to have an issue in a second. Let's, let's see what's here. So now it's going to be message error. Right? In this case, let's do not found. Because um, we don't want to like let the user know there was a message, but they they didn't have the right encryption key. We'll just say, oh, it doesn't exist. Um, okay. So because of that, maybe we want to move this down. So that we only set the expiration if it was successfully pulled out. And then here we just say a message. Not use item values sliced by the string. Okay, we can fix that. And then it says cannot use secret key type slice of bytes type 32 byte. So the issue here is that this secret key is a slice of bytes, but this password is an array of bytes, and so we have to convert it. And that can be a little tricky, so what we're going to do is this. So now, now what I'm doing is I'm getting the bytes and I say if the byte length is not 32, then that's a bad key. They're always supposed to be 32. And then I use copy. And that'll, and that'll put it into the secret key. And so then you know it's exactly 32 bytes. Sorry, yeah, 32 bytes long. And then we can use it as part of our secret. Um, and so this should decrypt our message now. This one's gone though because it got deleted. So we have to create another one. It's self-destructive. Uh, so now when we click it, see, we've decrypted it. Um, so now, if you're an admin, you can't read the messages stored on your secret server. And the messages destroy after 30 seconds. So I think we have here a, a way of sharing secret information without compromising our security. That takes a lot of fun out of being an admin, though. <laughs> uh, but this is how you should write your software to make it higher security. So if you feel bad, you're like, well, this still looks really stinking hard. You're, that is a reason why everybody gets it wrong, uh, because this is a lot of steps. But I mean. That's an awesome code sample. And that basically right there, uh, the website ProtoMail, have you seen that? So some engineers at CERN created ProtoMail, which is basically this. And so it's just email, I mean, it allows you to send and store private messages, and it's encrypted even from them on their servers, they say. Yeah, so an improvement to this. Well, okay, so what's, you know, we, we've improved it now because now we're not completely relying on Memcache. That's we're still amazing. relying on Memcache to delete it, but if it got orphaned, we probably don't feel as bad because the content's not readable anyway. The downside here is we are still decrypting this in our code. So there is a time when the message is received here where I can see it as somebody on the site. So I could add a backdoor to this code that would go save that off to some other database. As a programmer, I can add that. Okay. And so you're still relying on me. You're still trusting me with the contents of the message. Now, we've made it a little more secure in that at least the first thing we do is encrypt the message and then start scoring. So there's only a small period of time here and on the decode side where we see the actual message. But we're still, it's still on our server. We're still relying on, we're still trusting a third party for this. So any service that relies on that uh, has the potential to be compromised. And Snapchat was an example. Uh, Snapchat can easily be compromised because you trust it to do what it's saying they're doing. Um, there is an alternative to this, and that would be to do the encryption on the browser, to make JavaScript do the encryption. And then the only thing you send to the server is the encrypted message. And then the server never sees the decrypted message at all, right? If you did that, then this would be a lot more secure, okay? And there are sites that do that. Uh, Mega, you know, the, the storage site, they give you like 50 gigs of free space. Uh, they do all the encryption in the browser. You mean so, mega upload? Uh, Mega.co.nz. Okay. 
Uh, the original mega storage share site got shut down famously. Um, and so he created this other one that did the encryption on the client. And therefore, he could say to the people who tried to arrest him, I don't know what the content is, because he doesn't. It's all encrypted. Yeah, it's Kim.com, right? Yeah. Uh, and so Mega does all of its encryption in JavaScript, right? And so that would be another way to improve this, uh, is to not trust the server at all. Uh, but, but see, then you're relying on the fact that the JavaScript doesn't have a security limit. It doesn't have a backdoor that when you, when you post the data to the server, it doesn't also like post it to his private server. But you can look at your network inspector to see if that's happening, you know. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of trust involved in all this stuff. Uh, so. so now we have our secret server, and we'll use it for some other examples. Uh, because now I can share with you keys and things. Any questions about this? No questions? Okay, I'm going to add the code. Thank you. 